have made by the Eastridge story map team and they update uh, just September. And they have a, a overview map that uh, tell you how the like live update updating map tell you how the confirmed cases around the world. So you can move in around to see how many cases for today around the like the world. And also it highlights the the book like highlight confirmed cases and confirmed deaths. So you, you also can add the like uh, bullet bullet point to your uh, story map to to highlight what you want to uh, emphasize. And also you can insert like a uh, histogram, like here is they um, publish a, a temporal trend. So you can know how many cases from January to now in the world. And also they can talk about detail about the uh, what this pandemic come from. So it is first confirmed cases happens in Wuhan. So we can see here from this like fresh market and then how the, oh, let me see. Oh, okay. So how it's like outbreak trend through the China and also through the world. So China jump you to the world here. And also you can highlight what you want to talk about. So maybe you want to talk about like United States, so you can zoom to the United States and say kind of like what's the cases, outbreak cases, and also show the mortality rates in here. And also you can um, embed with kind, kind of live video. So this is used to be a live video. So you can see how the um, airport the, um, about the um, travel alerts in the US. So some tip from, let me go back to here. Okay. Oh, here. Okay. And some tip for, oh. Thank you so much. Oh, so some tip for the successful to build the story map. So you need to connect with your audience and you should lure people in to, so what you want to talk about to lure people in and choose the best user experience and also make it easy to read to the map and also to, to make your map very simplicity to express what you want to talk about. And also, so for the connect with your audience, you need to know who is your audience and also craft your text and map uh, and other contact to suit for your audience and also avoid like wordy word and use the accessible language expression in your uh, story map. And for the lure people in, so you should start with a story with a band, like what the topic in your um, um, uh, story map and also choose the right like, image to attract people and make sure the people uh, know where you are where they are because you need to highlight like give some description of your like map to describe what the um your uh, map want to talk about like this map so they will talk about the los angeles so they gave you a los angeles map and also uh, see uh, the um spots, uh, point in the map and also how to choose the best um, user experience so Amanda can use to talk okay. about this. so choosing the best user experience one thing that Esri has allowed you to do is choose different type of map templates. And these are just a few of the many templates that they offer, some of the more common ones. And Joy's gonna go ahead and present a link in the feed that gives you more information about different type of templates that you can use. But one of them that we've seen quite commonly is the map tour. And that is where you just place a point on a map, similar to that Los Angeles one we saw on the scene before. And each point, gives information. So you can move through your map, click on the point, and it tells you information about that map. Another type of user experience is a map swipe. So you may have a historic image and a modern image, and you could actually swipe between the two images. They overlay each other, and you could see the past as it relates to the present. This is especially useful in, say, a disaster zone where you want to see what the ground looked like before the disaster and after the disaster. The map journal, which we will be demonstrating in just a bit, is one of the more commonly used type of story maps where you have images 
and text narrative on a side panel. And then you have the main map on this larger platform in the, on the side. So that those are just a few of the user experience. And again, know who your audience is, know how to connect, what is going to be most attractive to your audience and what type of user experience do you want to give them. Make your map simple, make them clear, make them user friendly. Uh, think about it when you're looking at a map, what do you want to see and what is your message that you want to re relay? You want to eliminate anything that's unnecessary, any detail that is going to distract your viewer from what the map is about. And you're also given the ability to choose different base maps. Do you want it to be an image or perhaps you're just uh, giving information about a location and how to get there? You might just want to use a street map. So based on what type of information you're relaying, you want to choose the best base map for that. And then think about if you have any additional information, if you want pop-ups, if you want to add legends to your map, what type of symbology you'd like to use, and overall make your map message clear. Strive for simplicity, remove anything that's non-essential, and just keep that attention span. Remember, people's attention span is short in the digital age, so you want to grab the attention and allow the audience to navigate through the map and that you may have to shorten some of your text or simplify it. And you can always add external links to add more context as you wish. So now that you know the basics of how to create a story map, it's as simple as one, two, three. So for those of you who have an online Esri account, first thing you're going to do is log into your account. Now we will go over in detail uh, during our demo step-by-step -step how, so I'm just gonna go through this really quick. You will create a new story map by clicking new story map. And this is where you get to choose that user experience I just described. And the one that we'll be using in today will be the sidecar experience. And that's the one in the lower uh, right corner. Once you click on that, it will take you to this page where you can insert your title. You just type directly onto the screen, insert a subtitle, and you can update your name, and this is where you're gonna start adding your media. So this is going to be your attention grabber. This is going to be your home screen of your story map. And this is where the magic actually comes together is when you click on that continue your story map, that's where you'll start to add the different levels, the different pages and scenes. So when you click on that, this pop-up will come up. And as you notice, there's many options and it may not look like much at all, but once you start clicking through them, you can add a map, you can add images, you can add a number of things here. And this is an area where you can really get creative with. And once you're done with your map, the next thing to do is publish. So you've completed your map, you're satisfied with how it looks, you're ready to share it with the world, you can publish it. Well, maybe you don't wanna share it with the world. Maybe you just wanna share it within your own, own organization. Maybe you wanna keep your map private and just allow others who are in your organization to view it. So in our case, we're at UGA. So our organization would be the uh, Georgia system. Mm -hmm. And you could just choose your organization. Now, if you do make your story map public, it is searchable. It will uh, pop up on Google Maps. It will pop up on any of your search engines, especially if you have a more popular map. It, it just it functions just like a normal website would. So if you um, have ever considered making a website and have been a little bit nervous, maybe try a story map instead because they are just as informative and just as creative as a website can be. Plus you have some pretty cool maps you could use. So congratulations, you have just created a story map. And it really is that simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, the creative part is on your end to bring the material to the table. But if you don't have Esri, here is an alternative. It's called Knight's Lab. And this is an open source website. All right, do I just share the link? And it has similar functions to Esri. You do not have to pay for it. It's completely free. As you can see, it has some of those options like the swipe, the storyline, 
and right in the middle here you see that option for a story map. So when we get to the interactive section of our story map, if you don't have Esri, then we can also um, work through Nice Lab with the same material. The only difference is you can't use the Esri platform like a shapefile or any kind of data that you may have, but you can put your point on the map and add images. All right, we are going to go ahead and take an eight minute break right now. And we'll come back to start the interactive session.